Hey guys, Liam from Man Turner back with another IB Geography video and this is a continuation in the series on global climate. If you guys haven't seen my earlier two videos, I encourage you guys to check them out. And before we get started on this one, and those two were looking at the global climate more generally, and the process of um, global warming, the enhanced greenhouse effect, how that kind of works on a scientific basis. Today we're going to be looking at the impacts in terms of um, the three different spheres on Earth. How does an increase in global climate affect the hydrosphere, the atmosphere and the biosphere? In a later video we'll be looking at the implications uh, more generally for humans, but in this one we're going to be focusing first and foremost in terms of water, a little bit on carbon, um, more generally on weather um, events, more extreme weather events, uh, and then finally finishing off in terms of agriculture um, and an impact on plant life. Um, as always, I've just lifted um, the bullet points from the syllabus. You guys can have a little look at them now, um, but we'll be covering all of these points um, over the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. Cool, let's get started. Um, this first slide then um, is just going to illustrate the interconnectivity, the interdependency of these different spheres um, on Earth. You may have heard of these terms before, Good to kind of recognize them hydrosphere meaning water okay hydro is water biosphere um living things um in the in, on the planet and the atmosphere um, is in terms of the air around us okay that, that um, envelope of gases um that um, surrounds the earth i'm not going to um, touch on all of these points um, you guys can obviously pause the video and look at it in your own time but just wanted to show you that all of these things um, are interconnected therefore a change in one has these knock-on effects in terms of all the others okay? and that's the first point you guys have got to try and kind of extrapolate from this is that okay what is the implication first and foremost for the hydrosphere and how might that affect the rest of um, the, this particular cycle these particular spheres but let's talk about the hydrosphere first and foremost and um, this is a very very basic I apologize and um, water cycle but this is what you guys need to kind of understand is going on in terms of the movement of water on Earth. So rain, precipitation is collected in uh, water basins, that can be the sea, lakes, rivers, you name it. Okay, and then um, evaporation takes place, stored in the clouds, condensation then leads um, to that precipitation again. So there's a cycle there as well. Um, the first point then that we might be recognizing in terms of the impact of an enhanced greenhouse effect um, a global climate change on the water cycle um, is the possibility of more evaporation but rainfall um, won't be distributed evenly that's a really crucial thing to note as, as things get hotter on earth we expect more evaporation but that doesn't mean that precipitation will always fall on those same areas there may well be this increased water stress that might be a term you're familiar with water stress meaning um, that there is a desire for, for water but there isn't actually the physical environment um, providing it for that community for that population um, there is more kind of precipitation in already wet areas and less in dry regions so we have this um, extrapolation in terms of the diversity of experiences with regards to the hydrosphere so wet areas will be getting more wet weather dry areas will be getting more dry weather um, and in a second i'm going to show you a um, normal distribution and how that is affected in terms of um, changes in global climate and you'll see the shifts um, and the extensions of those um, edges that will um, again scientifically prove okay <laughs> that this is the case um, so there is more pre precipitation in already wet regions less in dry areas uh, and that obviously leads into more extreme weather events uh, and that'll be a separate point I'll touch on in a second uh, the next thing that we might see as an effect of, of global climate change is sea level change and this is a common um, common theme okay it's uh, a lot of the time people see it in the news that is the one of the, one of the things that a lot of people associate with global climate change is a change in sea levels not least because it has a physical tangible impact on human life on on, on humans living um, in coastal regions and we're already seeing migration patterns away from the most vulnerable areas but we're going to touch on that in more detail um, in a later video and um, so the first thing to note is water expands as it absorbs heat so we have as we have this global warming um, we expect the volume of water to increase based first and foremost on this thermal expansion okay? as as water um, is heated it, it, it expands and and therefore occupies a greater area the second point and this is again um, is is commonly commonly known and uh, we have the melting of the ice caps and that as we go from a solid to a liquid obviously means that sea levels are likely to rise 
and we've got statistical proof of that um, in the last 112 years up to 2013 global sea levels rose by 19 centimeters and that is a significant amount 19 centimeters may seem pretty small but that is a massive impact um, if you think about the scale of the oceans on earth um, the final point to make is about the carbon cycle we need to know that oceans are the second biggest carbon sink on the planet therefore they are critical in their role with regards to the carbon cycle um, in a later video we're going to be touching on this in a bit more detail you guys who are, um, who are studying biology um, and ESS you might already be familiar with this in fact we've got a couple of videos um, on this particular area already so I um, encourage you guys to look at that now pause the video uh, read up on it uh, but that's all you kind of really need to know in terms of the IB geography syllabus um, with regards to the hydrosphere um, the next thing to mention then is biodiversity and this is a term um, you might have come across before I really want to show you guys the um, definition first and foremost and that is the variety of all forms of life on earth this lovely image down there just shows you what I'm kind of getting across yeah, how, how many different spe species are there on earth and um, how do they vary geographically um, and with also re with regards to their biology um, but it includes all plants, animals and microorganisms. Um, there are approximately 30 million species on Earth and we've only discovered around 1.4 million. So although we've got a, a wildly um, biodiverse um, global environment right now, um, there is absolutely more that we don't know, particularly in um, the seas, particularly in, in regards to aquatic life. And the tropics are the richest area in terms of biodiversity and that's um, probably to be expected and um, it has a very very rich and fertile um, soil uh, and that is obviously the this kind of starting point with regards um, to uh, the biosphere and um, you need to have a, a um, an area where plants can grow and that has this um, knock-on effect in terms of the proliferation of plant life animal life and um, and the whole kind of system a bit more about the tropics and um, approximately half of all spe species on earth uh, can be found there now okay that's in terms of the identified um, species i can't say it can i um but uh, the tropics only cover around seven percent of the world's surface so that just shows you how densely um biodiverse that particular global region is okay the tropic of cancer the tropic of Cap capricorn and um, you guys might have covered um, even you might have looked at a case study there before um, the Amazon is obviously a very good example of a very um, biodiverse trop tropical area and um, that is located on the tropics there is 80% of insect species there and 90% of primates again some nice stats and um, you could obviously drop this into um, a smaller um, you know format question if it was to ask you um, about um, you know identifying uh, for finding biodiversity you might as well add in that you know that the tropics are the most biodiverse regions on earth um, the effect that the global climate has or, or global climate change is having on um, biodiversity and um, it's pretty stark and we're already seeing um, spe species <laughs> moving to high altitudes or, or different latitudes to survive as the global um, pattern of weather changes that means that some species have to move um, to find uh, a, uh, an existence that suits um, their physical needs and therefore gives rise to this um, mobility that we're seeing um, across uh, large swathes of um, animal populations uh, and that kind of has the the um, devastating impact of meaning that less mobile species less um, um, less animal groups um, or plant um, plant groups um, that are un unable to to find um, a more suitable home uh, become extinct and that obviously has a really big impact on local ecosystems uh, I mentioned it earlier how interconnected these particular um, spheres are that works on a basic level in terms of particular um, food chains uh, and beyond so there's obviously a massive impact in terms of um, biodiversity um, with regards to global climate change cool um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the impact of global climate on um, extreme weather patterns and the first thing we'll, we might be seeing um, is extreme temperatures and that gives rise um, to droughts and this is the diagram I was mentioning earlier we have that normal distribution in terms of hot and cold weather on earth um, in that kind of outline of blue that's what we've been experiencing um, over the last couple of hundred years 
um, this next um, shift is, is the um, impact of global climate um, on these high and cold weather patterns. So we're going to see a, a much bigger increase in incidence of very hot weather. And that gives rise to the incidence of drought, meaning that we are unable um, to provide enough water um, for plant life, uh, for human life. And that's a, a topic we'll be talking about in the next video. Um, that obviously means that we might have more heat waves as well. Um, so when these particular periods of extreme weathers, um, extreme temperatures rather, um, come in um, densely uh, packed kind of waves, we have these heat waves, we have this extended period of time where we are experiencing these extreme um, temperatures and that has a big impact on human resilience and, and the human resources as well. If I move my face out the way you guys will see and the next thing we're talking about is extreme precipitation. Um, and this is a, um, a really nice uh, graph that's just looked at the last 130 years um, of um, the number of storms on the planet. And you can see with that blue line, um, obviously it varies year on year, and that's a natural part of um, the extreme weather events that we see, that they are they go up and down, but that blue line um, is that trend line, that long-term trend line, and that's showing that there are more and more extreme precipitation um, events, and that can lead to flooding. Uh, again, a topic we'll be talking about in more depth in the next video. But you can see that both of these, in terms of extreme temperature and extreme precipitation, have a massive implication um, for human life, but also um, animal life and plant life um, on Earth. Cool. Um, let's talk a little bit now about um, global climate change and agriculture. So first and foremost, agriculture is going to be affected uh, by the increase in the number of these floods, these droughts um, and these heat waves. That makes sense um, and, and livestock are obviously susceptible to those same issues there will also be a change in change in seasonality um, so when will some um, plant life come to um, fruition uh, and also the growing regions um, so i mentioned earlier that some animals and, and, and different species are um, <laughs> moving around in terms of finding a new uh, region of the earth where they can thrive that is what i mean by growing regions which part of the earth now have has the um, uh, what pattern of weather that gives rise to um, a fruition in that particular um, plant or, or animal. Uh, another big impact of global climate change is um, soil erosion and degradation. And degradation is defined as the decline in soil quality. Um, so here we've got a picture of a, a region that has had massive soil erosion and that's when that top layer um, that topsoil is eroded away by the water, wind and um, other patterns of weather and it's also been degraded because that topsoil um, provides a lot of the nutrients that um, plant life needs um, to thrive. And, uh, and a, a few kind of causes of um, that soil degradation is obviously rising temperatures, um, a lower amount of rainfall, um, flash floods, again wiping away that soil, that top layer of soil. So soil erosion and soil degradation are very much interlinked. You can't kind of separate them out too much in terms of the processes uh, and, and wind. Uh, wind erosion is very, very potent in terms of uh, wiping away that layer of soil that we need. And topography means um, kind of the layer of the land. Um, and if you've got particular parts that are very, very flat, they're more susceptible to um, that wind erosion. If you have these peaks and these troughs, you might form this, this valley where that um, plant life is more... Um, able to um, to survive um, and to stabilize in those regions. Ooh, let me go. Um, cool, that is all I have for this particular video. I hope that's been super useful, giving you an overview of the impacts of global climate change on the environment. Um, I'm very, very happy uh, to announce that I'm going to do some more. Um, but guys, if you have any um, concerns for, for particular subjects that you're studying, First and foremost, go and check out some of the other videos um, that the top lantern tutors have created. So we've got some ESS ones, chemistry, maths, um, economics, you name it, they're, they're there. And as, and as always, if you need um, that one-on-one -on -one support, um, I'm available, and, and so are our top team of tutors. Cool. See you guys in the next video.